Hello and welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail and my guest today is somebody who comes on my program once every year to talk about some health related topic and her name is Gay, Dr. Gay Hilton. Uh, she, her, whose office in, is in Erie, Pennsylvania. And you are a naturopathic doctor, not, Correct. not a medical doctor. Right. Okay, um, since I knew we would be talking about a uh, health uh, topic today, I just brought in a stack of books that I want to start the program by recommending that people read. Uh, one that I should have brought in was the China study, which is another one, but I didn't grab that one on my way out. One is um, International Meat Crisis. This is a book that I was introduced to close to 20 years ago. Um, it's about how contaminated uh, the meat supply is these days and, and the diseases that you can catch, um, especially mad cow disease. Um, the next one I'd like to recommend is written by a doctor who appears frequently on the Dr. Oz show, and I believe they even went to medical school together. His name is Dr. Joel Furman, and his, the book is Eat to Live. And then um, here's a book by John Robbins, who I've mentioned before on Fresh Perspectives, a book called Reclaiming Our Health. And um, uh, basically, uh, he wants us to know that, you know, um, the main thing you have to do to stay healthy is to take really good care of yourself and eat a good diet, uh, which is more important than actually going to the doctor, from my point of view. This is a really good one, The Hallelujah Diet, uh, the Hallelujah Diet um, by a man named George Malkmus, uh, w who wrote it with uh, Peter and some people named Peter and Stowe Shockey. He's a man that started out as a minister and uh, learned um, that people were not taking good care of themselves. And, uh, it, it's a really, really interesting, really important book. This one was given to me. Most of these I found at used book sales. Um, this one was given to me as a gift, and a lot of people I know that I know have copies of it. It's How Not to Die by uh, Dr. Michael Greger, who is an actual MD, um, <clears throat> but he's done a lot of research into how we can prevent ourselves from dying of all of these different serious diseases is what he means. He doesn't mean we're gonna live forever, he just means we, we're probably gonna live longer than if we eat the standard American diet and, um, and that we'll live, or that we'll have a better quality of life uh, while, while we are living and even at the end. So um, I may be, uh, things that Dr. Hilton says today, I will probably uh, be um, getting out one or more of these books at a time uh, to just to say what I know that these people may have said on that topic. So the topic of the day is inflammation. So uh, thank you for coming on, Gay. Yeah, I always enjoy it. <clears throat> now, uh, can you give us a basic description of what inflammation is? Well, inflammation is uh, a lot of different things. It's not just one thing, but we know that the immune system uh, is going into a hyper, hyper action when we have an inflammation. And it's an irritation, and it can be caused by a myriad of different things, which I'm gonna discuss today. Uh, we know that there is a gut-brain connection. That's been something, the microbiome, that has been discussed for a long time in the last, uh, oh, I would say 10 years. Um, and we have found that a lot of inflammation is being associated with the microbiome. Mm -hmm. And so that is the gut-brain balance. 
uh, balance between the two and when uh, there is an inflammation uh, the gut and the brain are connected we now know that and uh, so much leaky gut which is inflammation of the uh, mouth from the mouth to the anus yes, the elementary and, canal and, and they say that uh, little pinprick size holes develop in the lining of the stomach exactly so if you've got an infection Say you have a parasite infection or a fungal infection, the parasites and the fungus, which would normally remain in the colon and small intestine, kind of slip out through those little pores uh, and create inflammation mm -hmm. throughout the body. Mm -hmm. And the cells react uh, to wherever the targeted organ that uh, is being uh, affected. But I think the most interesting thing about uh, inflammation is that inflammation alone causes so many different problems depending on what area it settles in it can cause low back problems it could cause and the low back problems could be as a consequence for example of a bladder infection mm -hmm. we know that the bladder meridian goes right up the middle of the back mm -hmm. and you'll see people running to chiropractors or running to acupuncturists or whatever to get relief from a symptom mm -hmm. that is actually being caused by an infection mm -hmm and the infection then creates the inflammation and the inflammation then exacerbates in the form of something that needs to be addressed. So I always say in, in healing holistically, you've got to go back, go back, go back. You don't mm -hmm. just go, oh, we'll just give you an antibiotic mm -hmm. and that'll fix it. Uh, the antibiotic might kill the infection. But, but it doesn't get to the root cause of the problem. Exactly. So the back problem, the low back problem could be due to, again, inflammation from a parasite infection that settled into the bladder, uh, a colon uh, infection uh, that uh, exacerbates in the form of diarrhea or constipation or whatever the case may be, could be parasites or fungus also. And then of course a virus can be vomiting and diarrhea. And so again, you have to pinpoint what the problem is. And that's one of the things I do in my practice is I look at the whole person not as the medical people do departmentalize. We look mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. the, I use a form of mm -hmm. uh, needless acupuncture where I'm looking at one system affects the next system. And when someone comes in and they tell me they have an inflammation or they're not feeling good or, or whatever the case may be, I have, it's my job to kind of look to see why they're having a problem, where they're having a problem. I'm looking at the etiology, the cause, rather than, gee, you have a symptom, let's treat it with you know, oh, you have a thyroid problem, we'll give you the thyroid formula. No, because your thyroid might be down because of something else. We've mm -hmm. got to keep going back, back, back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, I know that inflammation can be, um, I used to have a lot of trouble with back aches and things. Um, and I remember uh, when I went, moved from just being vegetarian to a totally plant-based diet, I remember after a few months went by, um, I guess that was a period of time where I was cleansing, but, uh, and I was eating mostly raw foods. And I remembered that after a while, I stopped getting aches and pains. So I asked a chiropractor to explain to me, what is that all about? How come I don't have to come in here and have you give me right. uh, adjustments anymore? And he said, because foods that come from animals cause inflammation. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, yeah. Now, while we do need protein in our diet, uh, and again, I always recommend to people, look on the blood type diet. I'm a real believer in the blood type diets because some blood type diets are very beneficial for that particular person who's dealing with a lot of inflammation. Mm -hmm. So for example, A's, and I'm an A, I don't know what you are, but an A is actually a real good uh, topic for, some, for someone that wants to go vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I, A's should eat more yeah, agrarian and, and I more raw. I don't even remember for sure what my blood type is. I should probably have that checked sometime. Uh, but uh, I remember we typed our own blood. It was part of what we did in biology class when I was in high school. And I remember uh, 
it was something positive. It, it was either A positive or B positive, and somehow I can't remember which one it is. But I know, my, I know that I do not do at all well on any foods that come from an animal. Right, and you're an A then, obviously. You think so? Yeah. Typically, A's are, uh, eat, are raw fooders, and O's, on the other hand, can eat more meat mm -hmm. and dairy. So if you're having aches and pains, it's a good idea to find out maybe that you are eating the wrong food for your particular blood type. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important that what you mentioned is after several months of juicing and eating raw and kind of staying away. I hear that all the time. Someone will say, you know, I just had aches and pains and inflammation all and the time. And then I tried this diet and it went away. And, and yeah, yeah, and yeah. They, got, they got their blood. Uh, there's all cat, which I use in my practice, which they can take your blood, they come to your house, take your blood, and then send it in, and a couple weeks later, they send you a report. Mm -hmm. And then I get the report, and the report's telling me, these are foods you should not eat, mm -hmm. because they create inflammation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for you, or any other individual that is dealing with a lot of pain and aches, there is inflammation, mm -hmm. and something's causing it. It's not just, oh, you're getting old, and you hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. And now there's a, a, a big connection with um, Alzheimer's. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the brain function, again, the, the blood-brain barrier that gets crossed with things that are, for example, people that have had their thyroid removed, which I really highly don't recommend. To let them take it out. Yeah, because the, the thyroid is the filter for heavy metals and toxins not to get into the brain. So when you kill the thyroid or you uh, remove the thyroid in, the, in some cases, that actually sets you up for the possibility of Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And Well, see, uh, when, when they told me that I had thyroid cancer, I, I refused to I let, remember them, you said that. let them take it out and went for uh, with an alternative Absolutely. Uh, therapy, and the problem went away, and I got to keep my thyroid glands. So. I was real happy about that. Oh, exactly. You and, know? and the diet is everything. So mm -hmm. if we were going to eat properly, juicing is the best way to go. I mean, juicing keeps your weight down and juicing gives you the live enzymes that don't have to go through the digestive system. You swallow the juice uh, that's been extracted, or if you're using a Nutribullet or a Ninja, it emulsifies the, mm -hmm. all the, the pulp. But in that case, it's got to be organic. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the extraction is also very, very good because um, the extractors will take out just the juice mm -hmm. and leave the toxic pulp because mm -hmm. that's usually where if there's any toxins whatsoever, they're in the pulp. Well, um, another thing uh, that you're supposed to do is you're really only supposed to eat organic celery. Exactly. Because of, because uh, non-organic celery is on the dirty dozen exactly. list. Exactly. So uh, for those of you out there, please, 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 if you eat celery, make it the organic celery. Exactly. So. And uh, it, it may be a little bit more expensive, but mm -hmm. well worth it. And mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. very good to find out what the dirty dozen are. Oh, sure. Because uh, some of the foods that you might think are clean uh, aren't the the thicker skinned f uh, fruits and vegetables are a little safer if you can't afford organic, mm -hmm. but absolutely cucumbers, celery, anything that's thin skinned, mm -hmm. you do not want to eat unless it's organic. That Good would probably point. include tomatoes too, yes. wouldn't it? Yes, uh, I know, and, and strawberries don't really strawberries even have are, a skin, you that's know, right. um, and they're heavily sprayed. It's my exactly. understanding if it doesn't come from an organic farm. It, and as are uh, any kind of uh, grapes. Right, and um, and raspberries and blackberries. Yep. and the berries. And uh, let me think, uh, like peaches are on the dirty dozen list. Yes. And I think nectarines are also. Yes, so the goal would be, I tell people, if you really want to be healthy, the reason we do organic is not just because of the dirty dozen and you're going to get more toxins mm -hmm. in you, but because the nutrition mm -hmm. is so much better when you're using organic foods, you're getting much, much more concentrated nutrition, as are you getting um, less 
junk, as we said, less toxicity, mm -hmm. and it digests better because you don't have that junk in the right. in the food. You're right. getting fresh, right. and organic tastes so much better. Yeah, I mean, yes. a, an organic carrot compared to an inorganic carrot is just immensely different. Yeah. Um, now it's my understanding that uh, eating like the refined white sugar and the refined white flour and like that can cause inflammation too. Absolutely. Anytime you are eating foods that are uh, a non-organic, um, processed, overly baked, uh, Meat, mm -hmm. uh, unless you're a no blood type, and then you can you can eat a little bit more meat, but then it should be organic, and and not to overdo it. Ex exactly, exactly. Um, I know. I mean, they're making hot dogs now with Angus beef, and they're using celery juice to kind of preserve it rather than using nitrates. But again, that's something you would want to eat very sparingly. Well, you know, I remember. Uh seeing something on television, and I think it was quite a number of years ago, it might have been on that 60 Minutes TV program, I remember a story about um, making sure to cook your hot dogs before you eat them uh, because uh, um, they can contain, that the hot dogs can contain parasites, that it's not really considered a cooked food. So, now they're coming pre-cooked. Are they? Yeah, most of them are pre-cooked. <laughs> well, this was a long time ago, uh, but uh, I remember everybody was surprised to hear that because everybody always had thought that hot dogs were already cooked. Yes. So, but yes. apparently at that point in time, they weren't. You can literally, in this day and age, as long as it's basically saying pre-cooked, but you got to mm -hmm. see that on the label. You could actually open a package of hot dogs and eat a raw hot dog mm -hmm. and you're okay. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still preferable to heat them up because they mm -hmm. taste better. Mm -hmm. And of course, summer's coming, so there are going to be a lot of people eating hot dogs. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to eat hot dogs, I recommend get the ones that are minus the nitrites, that are preserved via celery juice. You'll see it right on the label. Mm -hmm. And some mm -hmm. of the uh, other meats, mm -hmm. when you see celery juice, that's, mm -hmm. that's okay. Uh, they're making them more natural now. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody likes hot dogs, especially with onion and mustard in the summer to have a cookout. But you can eat the healthy kind. Mm -hmm. Angus beef for the best. I recommend stay away from any pork. Oh, um, yes. Pork yeah, is bad. You know, I, I read some books that were written by uh, holistic veterinarians, and they say never, ever give pork to your dogs and cats. Right, right. It's a dirty meat. Mm -hmm. It's really a dirty meat. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if you're going to do that, you want to make sure that if you are going to have to eat that kind of stuff, that you do as much organic as you possibly mm -hmm. can. And non-GMO foods. Non-GMO foods means there's no um, genetically modified anything in the food. And as long as you're doing non-GMO, uh, that's pretty much organic. You'll see the label on any kind of processed foods that doesn't have non-GMO, you don't want to eat it. If it has non-GMO, that means it's been, essentially the food has been coming from soils that are organic and have not had the herbicides and pesticides and whatever else mm -hmm. they put in that are mm -hmm. chemical. And that's safe. That's much safer. So if you're going to eat even grains, for example, I tell people, um, and this is an inflammatory thing for a lot of people, mm -hmm. white, fluffy, puffy. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, I tell people, if you're going to eat spaghetti, get imported semolina noodles from Italy. Mm -hmm. Why Italy? Because Italy has volcanic ash soils. And anywhere in Europe, essentially, uh, they are not allowed to use chemicals in their soils. Mm -hmm. I, England might be a little different, mm -hmm. but Germany, France, Spain, and Italy predominantly uh, have no artificial flavorings and all that in their foods. Mm -hmm. It's very non-GMO, mm -hmm. their soils are clean, and that's why their foods taste so good. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're gonna get spaghetti, I would say get your spaghetti 
at uh, Big Lots or uh, Aldi's or places where you'll see imported, imported Italian imported pasta. pasta. Okay, um, one thing that I was uh, going to say about inflammation, um, let me see. Now I've lost my train of thought. Well, here's one thing I'll yeah. bring up that you might click into what you were going to say. Um, if you are eating, and everybody should get the essential omega uh, acids, uh, the omega-3, 6, and 9. That's an important thing mm -hmm. to make sure that... Mm -hmm. Now, why? Because they're neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. And neurotransmitters mean that you're getting good brain signaling going to the areas of the body the brain mm -hmm. needs to be signaling it popped back into my head oh go <laughs> your neurotransmitters are working yeah um i uh, uh read a book this winter uh you were talking about not eating genetically modified right. foods and i read a book that uh it has kind of a funny story to it my sister-in-law watched an episode of my tv show of fresh perspectives mm -hmm. She lives in Florida, um, and uh, she's been watching Fresh Perspectives on the internet, and she sent me a book that I mentioned that I hope to read someday, that I'd, I'd seen it on a shelf at the bookstore at Chautauqua, and she sent me a used copy she got, uh, and the name of it is uh, The World According to Monsanto. Oh my. It's a French woman. Uh, whose regular job uh, is to make documentaries. And she did make a documentary on it, but then she wrote this book. And it's all about the horrible, nasty things that Monsanto does and how, con how they've contaminated such a large percentage of the world and everything with their toxic products. So... Um, and <clears throat> unfortunately, if Congress uh, I mean, I hate to say this, but what we need to be doing, and in, in, uh, in, in everybody needs to contact their congressman and their right, senator. Right, exactly. They, because they're letting these big corporations exactly, get away with exactly. this stuff. Exactly, they're getting and, paid and off. And it's all about the money. It's That's all right. about the money. That's right. So, um, so anyways, it's about uh, people should stop worshiping money. <laughs> exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? Uh, but anyways... Uh, their products, well, like their genetically modified foods, turn into a disastrous failure. And their, so, their Roundup, their so-called safe Roundup, is highly toxic. And it's getting in the soils, yes, and it's getting yes, into the roots, yes, and it's and, getting into the foods. And uh, one, of the ingredients, uh, one of the ingredients in it is an ingredient from agent orange exactly and we know what that did to the vietnam the uh, veterans yes. you yes. know so you're you're back to inflammation yeah so now you're getting foods that have contained these toxic substances and people that go into the regular grocery stores that don't go to all these where they have more organic or uh wegmans or uh, even walmart has now they're pushing more organics than they were 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is important because right now, we're going backwards environmentally. Mm -hmm. uh, things mm -hmm. that were even four or five years ago, part of our um, environment that were kind of like safety features have been removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And water quality is going down, mm -hmm. uh, plant uh, health is, mm -hmm. they're, they're pulling back a lot of these, um, uh, stop gaps that they had before, right? And right. it's a concern because well, even the uh, according to this book, even the agencies that are supposed to be protecting us, like the Environmental Protection Agency and the Food and Drug Administration, they're all letting those oh. agencies are letting them get away with it. And those are the agencies that are supposed to be protecting us. Like there was this one. A uh, woman that I know that's kind of an expert on the, these subjects that we're talking about. I was talking to her on the phone one day, and, and she's eventually going to come on Fresh Perspectives to be interviewed. Uh, and I, I, we were having a conversation, and I said to her, the only thing that's going to save us is if everybody quits buying this toxic stuff. The, or 
and this is a biggie, which we just talked about, start listening to what these politicians are saying. Mm -hmm. And if a politician says, look, I'm for the environment, vote for them. Because uh, there's so many of these politicians that get in and they get lobbied by these Monsanto groups and, and other toxic groups or influence the executive realm of the uh, government and big bucks. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, hey, push this, push this particular law and we'll make sure that you get plenty of money for your next election mm -hmm. campaign. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you're seeing, especially in this last um, uh, election in November this past year, uh, how so many of these new um, congressmen and congresswomen are very environmentally involved. Well, you know, um, we've been hearing a lot on the radio since Jan the beginning of this year. Um, I had just finished reading a book at the beginning of January, a book that was written by a woman who was born and grew up in India, she, an Indian woman, and um, she went back to India as a young adult after, you know, she'd gotten, in, she'd come here to get a college education and met and fell in love with and married an American man. But um, before they got around to starting their family, uh, she and her husband went back to, in, went to India for a couple of years and uh, were researching like women's rights and stuff like that. And, and just human rights in general, a, a very kind and caring person. And um, I had just finished reading this book, and, um, and then all of a sudden, I no sooner finished reading this book, and I start hearing that she is now um, a congresswoman from the state of Washington. You may have heard of her, Pramila Jayapal. I think I have. Yeah, yeah. And it's and so important to really study the uh, platform mm -hmm. of anybody mm -hmm. running for president. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we've gone backward in this last mm -hmm. four years, mm -hmm. uh, or the last two years, I should say. Mm -hmm. And that's sad because the wind, uh, the windmills, and the turbines, and all this have been the, have been kind of a lot of them have not been utilized like they were. Uh, and Scott Pruitt, yeah. you know, who was the head of the EPA, is no longer in it. Thank God. Because he was, he was turning everything backward. Mm -hmm. But this is very, very, very important mm -hmm. that people educate themselves mm -hmm. with respect to who is running, what their platforms are with mm -hmm. respect to the environment, mm -hmm. and not get stuck with a candidate who says one thing and does another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I just interviewed somebody a few weeks ago. It was the Easter weekend when I interviewed uh, him. And uh, we did a program on uh, the wind farm situation. Um, I, I didn't know what Judy Einock meant when I interviewed her last year when she was running for New York State Assembly. But um, when she said, poor Arkwright, until my husband and I went over there one day uh, back in September and um, saw that all of these windmills were sitting in people's lawns, some of them, some of them only a thousand feet away from these pe people's houses. And, and the people over there are getting, uh, getting sick, having trouble sleeping, and all kinds of things like that. You know, they're having a lot of, uh, they're having a lot of problems. So there's a lot of unhappy people over there. Well, again, uh, and the other thing we ought to be concerned about with respect to inflammation is fluoride in the water system. Oh, systems. yes. You know, uh, people uh, don't seem to be able to get it through their heads. I hear so many people say, you need fluoride in your water so your kid's no, teeth you will don't. be protected. Um, it's a carcinogen. And it, it makes the pineal gland turn to like stone. It, it it's, does it. Oh, it's horrible. Uh -huh. It's got a lot of bad aspects. But here's what's happening in most communities. Mm -hmm. They're being sucked into this, mm -hmm. and uh, the the water authority, 
for mm -hmm. any particular city is the one that makes the decision. Mm -hmm. Now, what's happening is in a lot of communities where there are complaints about the fluoride, they're reversing it. They're, they're going back and the, the, the people as a whole are saying, look, we don't want Florida in our water. And there are some communities that have had fluoride within the last three or four years. They're going to their water authorities and really pushing um, uh, them to reverse it, you know, mm -hmm. vote it out. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing mm -hmm. people need to be aware of. If your local water authority um, is being appointed by your con councilman on in particular where I live it is, and it got pushed through because a couple people wanted it. And uh, it was, because of a couple of people. Yes, yes it actually yes. one man mm -hmm. made the difference between his vote and it was a tie. Mm -hmm. Nobody, the majority of people in my community of Meadville did not want fluoride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we're just about to get it. So now you got to start thinking in terms of, okay, I'm going to have to get something that can filter it right, out of my exactly. sink. exactly. And you got to put a filter on your shower because you're yeah, going to absorb it through yeah, your shower. Yeah, it's the same thing where vicinities have chlorinated, chlorine exactly. in their water too, because I mean, chlorine might kill germs that are in the water supply, but uh, it's toxic to humans too. Sure it is. Sure. So consequently, one of the things I tell people about inflammation is we got to associate what the inflammation is, what's causing it. And when you find out, is it food? Is it your environment? Now, here's another thing people don't think in terms of. Bruce Lipton's done a lot of research on this. He is saying a majority of our illnesses are all emanating from our thoughts. Mm -hmm. So the, th the food you eat, the thoughts you think, and the environment that surrounds you all are associated with inflammation, toxicity, base stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So say I find out you got a candida infection. Well, by screening you, if that's what I find, what caused it? Mm -hmm. Is your pH acidic? Mm -hmm. And is your pH acidic because of the food you're eating? And, or are you not drinking enough fluids during the day? And, con and as, a constant, uh, as a consequence of that, your urine is too concentrated and that's causing inflammation throughout the body. In other words, if you have a lot of toxicity uh, that is being released through the liver and the kidneys and you're not flushing because you're not drinking enough fluids, water, natural fruit juices that come from the fruit or the vegetable, um, you can actually be creating an inflammation in your body from that. Just from being dehydrated. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a major, major problem. Well, you should drink half your body weight in ounces every day. Have yeah. water with you at all times. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've gotten, you know, in fact, when I have to go somewhere, um, like to somebody's house, even just to somebody else's house, I'll take a water bottle with me because... Um, who knows what the wa their tap water exactly. is at their house. We're really lucky. We've got really, really good, good water. Wa well, we have our own well. Pri private well. We live out in the country, and the water in that well is excellent. But you have to be careful also. Your water might be good, but get it checked, because many times what people are finding is that if there are farms mm -hmm. around your mm -hmm. property, the drain off of the pesticides and the herbicides mm -hmm. may get in mm -hmm. your well. Well, we did have it tested good, last good. year. That's great. Um, now, one thing I wanted to mention, because you were bringing up uh, the thing about what to eat, um, and I know that uh, with the Hallelujah Diet, uh, George Malkmus says that our diets uh, should be um, 85% of what we eat should be raw. raw, raw plant foods. Yep. That we shouldn't eat more than 15% cooked of our foods cooked. So Because it's um, dead food. Right, right. And here's the reason. Most people don't quite understand why raw, because they'll go, oh, I don't think I could do that. I uh -huh, need something uh -huh. cooked. Raw contains enzymes galore. Oh, I know it. I know. So uh, when you're eating raw... You're getting more enzymes. Now, people will, might say, well, what, what's the importance of enzymes? Enzymes digest. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they clean your body. They're scrubbers. They're they're a living thing. That's right. They're living um, food. They're living food. Yeah. Not dead food. Right, right. Especially if you're eating sprouts. Oh, exactly. You know, because then you're eating like food that's not even full grown and because of the way that you grow it, you it's not actually picked. It's basically still alive and growing when you're eating it. So when you put that into your body, it raises your pH uh, and and it raises your energy level. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really high. I I mean really, really high. And I always say if you go to a naturopath, whether it's a naturopathic doctor or a naturopathic counselor or nutritionist, and they don't check your pH. To me, that's a faux pas. That is like one of the worst things that can be a result of getting a consult with someone. If they're not either taking some tape or they give you a stick and they don't check your pH, if your pH is low, uh, anything below 7.0 is indicative of poor digestion and assimilation. That's health. Mm -hmm. So pH is vital. Mm -hmm. And if it's down around 6055, boy, that's, that's in the toilet. Mm -hmm. That's low. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that means that you're not healthy. Mm -hmm. And that also means that you're going to be a prime tar target for cancer mm -hmm. or any other degenerative conditions. And uh, also it's very important to make sure that inflammations are, you pay attention because inflammations are your little red flag. Mm -hmm. Something's mm -hmm. not right. Yeah, I, I think I might want to point out here that um, inflammation has a lot to do with having heart attacks and strokes Absolutely. and things, stink things too. I don't think people really uh, make that connection too much. Inflammation causes so many problems. And inflammation, as I mentioned, is the precursor uh, to a disease. But if you're, and, and your immune system is trying to keep up. It's trying to keep the in inflammatory process down. The inflammatory process is your body's way of saying, we've got a problem here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why just what you mentioned is so vital because if we can jump in and say, okay, let's get that inflammation out of there. Mm -hmm. Look at brain uh, issues now, mm -hmm. so so much dementia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I Isn't, mean, and young people, younger yeah. people are getting it. Yeah, and I think um, a lot of people don't think of comparing like their brain with their heart, that's you right. know, uh, because I think that a lot of Alzheimer's disease and like that is my understanding that um, there's there's plaque buildup in the arteries in the brain. You can get it there as well as in the arteries that go to your heart. Absolutely. Too. And again, here's another thing to be very cognizant of. If you know your blood type and you eat essentially the foods that are associated with good health for that particular blood type, you won't have inflammations. The inflammations cause nerve inflammation. It, like you said, it can cause plaque buildup. Mm -hmm. uh, and people that aren't getting enough essential fatty acids, and like pumpkin seed oil oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah. olive oil, and the new one is uh, avocado oil mm -hmm. and coconut oil. These mm -hmm. are wonderful oils. Mm -hmm. to add to your diet mm -hmm. and they're now even recommending you know ghee you know the, the clarified the butter. clarified butter absolutely um, these are nerve transmitters well they've always eaten ghee in India exactly and look how thin they are mm -hmm. they also eat a lot of, they also put a lot of coconut in their main food That's recipes right, in their meals. I have a recipe that I make um, with black-eyed peas, um, it's called you know it's called East Indian black-eyed beans. I think you had that at the vegetarian. Oh, dinner. maybe you it was were there delicious. one of the times. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was last month. Yeah, right. Yes. So anyway, and it um, wasn't spicy. It was just lightly. Just, yeah, and it, it was great. And coconut is one of the ingredients in that East Indian style black-eyed yeah. beans. And it's a wonderfully delicious recipe. Yes. You know, if you love Indian foods, <laughs> you should try it. Right. Yeah. And it's not for even people that don't. And I'm not crazy about mm -hmm. Indian food, but mm -hmm. I will tell you, I enjoyed that bean dish mm -hmm. because you had a little bit of cumin in it, 
just I enough had, to flavor I, it. I had some turmeric. Yeah. I had, uh, I had, I believe, cilantro in it. Yes, you did. Um, I could taste the cilantro. Yeah. Well, anyway, it basically, it was, uh, it, it was the East Indian spices, but not overpowering because ever since I start, first was going through perimenopause, somehow um, those really having it overly spicy has not agreed with me. It just feels really bad in my mouth now, but mildly spicy. And remember, a lot of these countries, because uh, they look at parasites as a major mm -hmm. problem. We're here in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you had to be in a third world, world country to get parasites. Parasites are rampant. Mm -hmm. We have dogs. We have cats. Uh, we um, garden. Mm -hmm. And everything needs to be soaked. Mm -hmm. uh, before you eat it, if even if you garden or, or you buy organic, you still need to soak mm -hmm. your fruit and mm -hmm. vegetables for 20 minutes. Believe it or not, I think we've mentioned this before, a half teaspoon of Clorox per gallon of dishwater, not bleach, Clorox, and or um, a cup of white, you know, just plain white vinegar. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you allow the, the food to soak, and that cleans the parasites and the toxins and anything that may be on there off. Um, well, you know, um, now I had interviewed somebody back during the winter about green house cleaning. Oh, absolutely. And, um, no toxic chemicals in it. Yeah, house. She, uh, she recommended, uh, she was telling us that uh, vinegar is, is a really terrific germ killer. Absolutely. You know, uh, um, you don't want to. In, eat anything with white vinegar. No, no. Apple cider, yes. Yes. But you can clean your windows with white vinegar. Yes, and yes. And you can disinfect. Yeah, she says it's a real disinfectant. In fact, one time, and I wish I could get her on my TV show, but I haven't been able to get a hold of her, I had the opportunity to meet a naturopathic dentist a couple of times. Oh, yeah. And she said that... Um, uh, as far as uh, germ killing bacteria goes, she said that um, that's where the, orig the formula for the old original formula of Listerine, Listerine. came <laughs> from was because when they had the plague in Europe, um, a lot of people were dying and people would want to rob the dead bodies. So they would rub these certain herbs on their hands uh, as a way to prevent themselves from getting the plague while they were robbing the dead bodies of the people oh, who died of the plague. And uh, she said that's where the old original formula for Listerine came from and that, um, uh, and that uh, it's, it's a, she said it's a really good antibacterial mouth rinse for killing off 99%. Uh, the bacteria in your mouth. The only problem is you want to use an alkaline rinse after you use the because Listerine so because, um, because the a Listerine is such a high, so high in acid that it can damage the enamel on, on your teeth. teeth. Yes. So you need to rinse it with an alkaline mouthwash after you rinse with the Listerine in your mouth. So And of course it's got eucalyptus in it, which is a natural antiseptic <clears throat> but well, I, you know well you know I actually um, after I met her and heard that story I actually have experimented and put it on cuts and things that I had and they would c heal up really fast probably because the Listerine kills the germs in the wound another very good natural antiseptic I studied three years of homeopathy uh, is calendula the the oh. homeopathic Oh, calendula yeah. ointment or gel oh, if you put yeah. that on a cut you'll be amazed how it's not only a healer for the cut mm -hmm. so there's no scars mm -hmm. but it also works as a natural antibiotic and another thing that causes cuts and things and pimples too to heal up really fast is um, if if you're one of these people that's like me where I like to take a half of a lemon and yeah. uh, juice it and mix it with a big glass of water uh, in the morning when you get up. Um, you can take the peel and 
the, the inside of the peel and rub it on cuts and scratches and pimples and which all is kinds loaded of, with bioflavonoids like a vitamin C. Yeah. But here's something that I think we should also mention about the inflammation deal. Your liver, your kidneys, your lungs, your colon, your spleen, all these are um, areas of the body that are in control of, for example, the spleen's in control of lymph and, and blood, um, uh, the, the red blood cells and the white blood cells. I mean, this is a very important gland. The liver, of course, detoxifies, the kidneys detoxify, and then the, everything is dumped through the colon and the kidneys and the pores of the skin. So if you are flushing, meaning you're doing lemon water, you're doing fresh fruit and vegetable juices that are coming from mm -hmm. the fruit and vegetable. Say you take half your body weight and you say, okay, I'm gonna, and I notice myself, if I get half my body weight in ounces every day, I feel great. Mm -hmm. If I back off and don't get quite as much, you oh, aches I know and pains. It. You can feel them. And, and That's you, the inflammation. And you feel tired, too. Exactly. If, if you're not drinking enough water. So use your fruit and vegetable juices as part of your fluids. Don't drink concentrated juices like you get in the stores. Right, Unless right. you dilute them. Pomegranate juice is a wonderful, healthy juice, but what I do is I put it in my water sometimes. Right, That's right, part of my fluids. Right. Um, but, oh, what a difference, you, the muscles, and a, a big symptom, and I just cannot say this enough, is inflammation is rampant in muscles and joints. If oh, you're not yeah. getting enough fluids, mm. those joints and those muscles get loaded up with calcium, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's because there's too much of a concentration. Now, calcium, inorganic calcium, is the result of eating a high diet of carbohydrates. Pasta, bread, noodles, all those are, they're, it's inorganic uh, calcium. It turns into inorganic calcium mm -hmm. in your body. Mm -hmm. Now, if you eat a little bit of pasta, that's no problem. White rice, same thing. White, fluffy, puffy. Mm -hmm. I don't even like white rice. I know. Though. Well, I mean, basmati is pretty good. That's a, that's yeah, a much I, higher quality. I'll but. only eat whole grain. I like the I, I like the Lundberg short grain yes, brown rice. Yes, that's the best. And I like the brown basmati rice. Yes. Short grain uh, Lundberg is the healthiest rice you can eat. And the whole grain rice, you know, your wild rices. But again, anything that produces mucus in your body is kind of snuffing out the oxygen levels, mm -hmm. it, the cellular matrix. So you want to make sure that you're flushing, get the, get the oxygen mm -hmm. flowing, mm -hmm. uh, get the calcium deposits that people get in their arteries and their valves of their heart mm -hmm. and their joints. Mm -hmm. This is all coming predominantly from inorganic calcium from not drinking enough fluids. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear people say, gee, my back aches and my sh oh, shoulders hurt. Well, what have you been eating? You know, yeah. it, too much dairy, yeah. Yeah, uh, really. not enough uh, water sugar uh, sugar I mean, big time sugar. because it's acidic it's a it's a poison mm -hmm. if i muscle test somebody that's holding a sugar bag in their hand their arm's going to go down every time yeah i know <laughs> i've seen that yeah so uh, what was that noise my cell phone <laughs> you're supposed to have it turned on while we're off while we're on television <laughs> it's just sending a message that that's okay all. The volume's down. <laughs> okay um yeah, getting back to um, inflammation. Brain stuff, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's a, a really important thing yeah. when you think about yeah. it, is the brain stuff. Uh, right. Because it controls I've, the whole rest oh of the gosh, body. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Your antenna is your brain. That's why when people have a stroke, they become paralyzed. Exactly, because, because, exactly. Because uh, it shuts off... Um, it shuts off the blood, uh, it shuts off, is it, well, it, well, it just can't. It depends it, on it, what causes it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it shuts off, uh, well, anyway, you just lose your ability to uh, certain body parts. When, yeah, I mean, if you have an aneurysm, you've got a blowout. Mm -hmm. But again, aneurysms, I remember reading this study, and I thought, what an, an intriguing study. They were finding uh, chickens that had low copper levels in their blood 
were having aneurysms left and right. Really? And so that what they were basically saying is, even though copper is a trace mineral, if you're low in copper and you have an aneurysm, that's the reason. That you were low but in that, low that on, trace mineral but copper. Being a, low on that <clears> one <throat> mineral that's right. uh, can cause you to have a brain Absolutely. aneurysm. Absolutely. That's right. But, but getting back to strokes, um, strokes a lot of times are also caused from calcium buildup mm -hmm. in the um, veins and the arteries. Um, plaque mm -hmm. is a lot of times calcifications. And uh, I know my dad at 91 had a valve replacement of his aortic valve. He, he had, had, he had aortic a, stenosis. He had it when he was 91. One. Usually they won't do surgery well, he was on in people such, that old. He was in such good health, they kind of used him as a guinea pig, which oh. I didn't like because mm -hmm. I tried to dissuade him. Yeah, usually people in their 90s, they don't, uh, yeah. they don't a, try to do anything. They have a new one now where they go up through the uh, femoral artery. Uh, they go artery up through and, the yeah. groin, yeah. yeah. But I, I think the, the bottom line on all this is you can decalcify. Mm -hmm. And if you, for example, do celery juice, a pint mm -hmm. of celery mm -hmm. juice every day, that starts to dissolve the calcium in your arteries. You can also do um, uh, various... Uh, things that like suppositories that will break down the calcium buildup that go right through the rectal wall uh, within 88 minutes the EDTA is flowing all through your body that can now kind of dissolve used to get infusions of EDTA now they can do it through a um, suppository through the rectum oh uh -huh. and then it'll go in and clean out uh, the area that it's focused on whether it be the gallbladder and kidney stones or um, issues. You, it, there are things that can clear up kidney and bladder stones yes, absolutely. without the there person are. having Absol to have surgery. And I tell people this all the time. Juicing, for example, carrot, beet, and cucumber juice. Ten ounces of carrot, three ounces of beet, and three ounces of cucumber juice will uh, break up stones. And I've had patients that have done this and they've just been amazed. And then I usually recommend glitamins, which is a suppository that will go in and also help clean out the liver and kidneys of any plaque buildup and junk, toxic waste that may be in the body, uh, so that the function of detoxification is much more accelerated and um, you're not getting toxic. As we get older, we're getting more toxic. We're building up toxins if we haven't been keeping our body clean. Now my dad, uh, lived to be 92. I think he would have lived to be a lot older. He if he hadn't had the surgery. I do. Yeah. Because um, he got on drugs. They, the reason they wanted to do the valve replacement is, oh, well, you'll be able to do less drugs. You'll be able to get off the drugs. But then he had to have a blood thinner because of having the valve replacement, well, right? Well, uh, for a while, and then they took him off that. But uh, unfortunately, it did not the valve worked okay that wasn't the problem the drug therapy was not good and that took kind of took him down and he was a very healthy person but one of the things he did his entire life he did yoga he exercised oh on your a daily father basis. practiced yoga he, oh. he did uh he bicycled a half an hour every day on his stationary bike well he probably meditated too then didn't he? i think he did he was a phys ed major as a younger man and he graduated from springfield mass which is the ymca school mind body spirit mm -hmm. uh if you ever have seen the y triangle that's mind body spirit and they learn that stuff that's all part of their uh education but you know what he did on a regular basis uh not a big water drinker but he was a huge fruit salad eater oh and he oh, would put yeah. apples and grapefruit and strawberries mm -hmm. and blueberries mm -hmm. and bananas mm -hmm. and he ate a lot of fruit mm -hmm. throughout his life well fruit is detoxifying right and right vegetables are mineralizing yeah so because he detoxified a lot and he exercised a lot I think that's what gave him the gravitas. Yeah, well, you know, I read somewhere uh, one time where somebody said, and I, it's, I can't remember offhand where I read it, but I remember reading that um, plants are the best 
water filtering. Exactly. Make the best water filters. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> so if you're if you're doing fluid levels for the day again, make sure you're including the fluids that you're getting from your whether you do a mm -hmm. Nutribullet or a Ninja uh, or a extractor. Count that as your fluid for the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With, along with your lemon mm -hmm. water, and I recommend lemon water too. Oh yeah, flushes yeah. the kidneys. Oh yeah, and it yeah. also helps break up calcium. Calcium's oh. a biggie. Uh -huh. That's a biggie, and that's because of our bad diets. Uh -huh. Too much sugar, too much white fluffy puffy. Uh huh. You know, another thing that's lacking in the the American diet, well, maybe all over the world, I don't know, is a lack of iodine. Yes. In the modern yes. diet. Yes. So when I had the thyroid cancer scare there, I got to where I was eating sea vegetables on a regular basis. Very good point. Sea vegetables are so good for you. I get, and I give my dog this too, um, I, there's little packages, they're only about 64, 74 cents a package. They might have 20 little pieces of nori that's oh, flavored at yeah. Walmart you can buy in the Chi yeah. Chi Chinese, Japanese food section. Uh -huh. And I always buy those. And then yeah. I make sure I have a little piece of nori every day because nori is a heavy metal detoxifier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sea vegetables it, pull the heavy metals out of your body. Yeah. And um, I, like, I like the big, I like the square oh, the big one. sheets of nori. And then I, I, I cook some of my whole grain rice, rice and, and, and you it. can roll it up you know and put like sprouts and sure things in it you know i just made it for the may vegetarian society dinner that we had the other uh, the other night uh, i make it in the month of may every year i have a turquoise platter and i go out in the woods and get watercress by the stream and violets and i put i spread the um the watercress on a bed of that on the platter and then I uh, put the vegan sushis on there and then spread the violets around on the outer oh, edge. And edible it's flowers. It's Yeah, it's oh, really wow. beautiful to look at, at it. There are people who take pictures of it every year when oh, I make wow. it. And, um, and, and you can eat everything all, except for the platter. This is the only thing yeah, that's right. not edible. Yeah. Um, Violets are a really good source of vitamin C. Hibiscus, vitamin C also. Yeah. Uh, and dogs will eat uh, hibiscus flowers. And oh, they're very they? good for them, yeah. Oh. They, somehow they like the taste. I have a hibiscus plant that I've had for like ever, 17, 18 years. And uh, it blooms every year. But again, you have to make sure the water's, there's plenty of water. But getting back to the brain stuff, mm -hmm. the brain dementias are just rampant. Mm -hmm. When have you ever heard people, how many times are you hearing about people that are dementia, that they were started to have issues that, you know, forgetfulness and whatnot, and the next thing you know, uh, they're in a home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they can't, their, their cognition is terrible. Mm -hmm. And this again goes way back to the diet. Mm -hmm. Bad eating, not eating enough raw, high enzyme foods, live foods as we would call them, um, not noticing inflammations early on that mm -hmm. were red flags that, hey, we've got a problem starting mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. What's causing the inflammation? Parasites exude a toxic waste that affects the brain. Uh, candida exudes a toxic waste that affects the brain. Viruses can affect the brain. Uh, and these are all inflammations, uh, and especially people that go to foreign countries like India, that are very filthy, and they come back and they have got they've contracted some kind of a condition that has lowered their immune function, mm -hmm. and inflammation mm -hmm. has started. Mm -hmm. uh, but we always have to be so watchful of any kind of. All of a sudden, the joints are hurting. Why? There's something back of it. There's You're, a reason for it. Yeah. I, I don't even like to hear the word arthritis. Arthritis is a symptom of something that is causing your arthritis. Mm -hmm. Etiology is mm -hmm. my big word. I don't look to treat symptoms. I look to find out why you've got the problem. Mm -hmm. And that's why the clinic in Erie and integrative wellness options mm -hmm. 
and I'm in the um, well, on the web. If get you, a hold of me. If you don't eliminate what's causing the problem, it's going to come back. Absolutely. Uh, the doctor might be able to help you get rid of the symptoms. But That's if you, all they treat. If you keep living a bad lifestyle, eating all the wrong foods, it's going to come back. Well, and not only that, but let's look at the, the big pharma. They're treating you with chemicals, mm -hmm. which are themselves toxic. Mm -hmm. Many of the cancer treatments, believe it or not, cause cancer. Cause cancer. I know. So uh, the, the thing that has got to be understood, look at Zeralto and all the, the, the suits, uh, the lawsuits that came out of people that would have strokes or get their blood too thin and have aneurysms. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, these are... it's my understanding that, like, just because you take uh, a blood pressure medication or a blood thinner or whatever does not guarantee you will not have a stroke. Well, and you can take natural blood thinners. Oh, yeah. Sarsaparilla support. is a natural blood thinner. Um, enzyme foods, high enzyme foods, proteolytic enzymes. All leafy, those leaf, things thin the blood. Leafy greens. Leafy greens, um, yes. Dark uh, leafy greens. Spinach. Gr ground up flax Arug seeds. Arugula. Ground oh, up yeah. flax seed. Um, yeah. It's, uh, you know, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. Turmeric. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, anyway, the Indian spices are anti-inflammatory. And many of the Indian spices are also antifungal anti-parasitic and that's why they have so many spices in their food same with the Hispanic diet mm -hmm. uh, because of the high level they understand and comprehend parasites are a big problem mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. same in China mm -hmm. uh, you know China's not exactly a clean country but they're aware parasites are rampant and they their foods contain a lot of garlic the kill yeast and oh and yeah and, and oh, parasites. yeah yeah yeah, you should actually eat something from the Allium family every day for Absolutely. good health. Onions, uh, onions, garlic. garlic, leeks. Leeks, yep. Well, I hate to say it, but we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been fun. It we has, has covered it? the gamut, um, haven't we? Okay, uh, I want to thank you again for coming on. And for those of you in the viewing audience, uh, read these books. Read these books. Um, It'll be, and follow uh, the advice in them. Um, they will enrich your life. See you later.